It's so dumb. Oh, it's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to a new video. Sorry for the wait, but I'm afraid that for a while videos will take longer. Anyway, today's topic might be known to whom has played the game War Thunder. Another tank, this time a relatively recent one. What the fuck did you just say? Okay, settle down, settle down. It's not a tank, it's a self-propelled anti-air gun or SPAAG for short. But come on, I need to bring in the average viewer too. Today's topic is the Leopard 4070, or the Leopard Bofors 4070. A weird design from the 90s. There must be an error, I... It's not an error? Huh. And it was made despite there were these around? Why? Oh, I'm here to answer that. Okay. No, no, yeah, 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 I can, I can do that, yeah. <coughs> Today, I will answer why was it made. So, come on, let's start and learn together. Helicopter, helicopter! In the 1950s, with jet propulsion becoming more common between aviation through the world, AA guns started relying less and less on cannons against fixed-winged aircraft. However, in the next decade, a new type of aircraft started gaining attention and importance on the battlefield. The helicopter. Granted, they weren't um, a new machine, by any means. Already through the Second World War, various militaries started employing and developing helicopters, mostly to transport cargo or to attempt scouting missions. However, through Vietnam and the October War, the relevance of this machine became more clear when they showed the better opportunity for cruiser support than most fixed-winged aircraft. An armed race had begun, and by 1971 the USSR had started warring the West with their attack helicopter program, bearing in 1972 the first success in the form of the Mi-24, and in 1977 with the Mi-24 Hind D, armed with fire and forget missiles. This armed race led to many countries to restart the program to develop once again fast firing cannons to fight off attack helicopters. This unit would have to cover armored vehicles and thus need to be as armored. However, while the new missiles led the USSR to develop mixed AA system with fast firing cannons and missiles against aircrafts, NATO doctrine tended to make it so that Western countries would instead have different systems dedicated to either fast firing cannons or missiles. Italy saw this development too, and already in 1962 had started programs for self propelled anti air guns, such as the MEI, a system of fire and transport of anti air missiles which should have been formed by a radar vehicle and two or more launchers. Nevertheless, it would be only in the 70s with the reform of the military and that Italy would actually try to take care to cover their units with SPAAG instead of towed AA artillery. In 1975, the Italian army went through a major reform, completely changing its organization and starting a program of modernization of the army, starting various projects regarding development of military vehicles. The idea was to mostly rely on Italian industry to achieve new gear. On paper, the plan could have achieved good results, creating vehicles that would have actually met the needs of the Italian army with the experience gained by Italian industry, which has spent years after World War II producing on license other nations design and also providing new jobs in an especially rough period such as the 70s. However, the plan met two problems. One was NATO integration. By deciding to create locally, Italy could not rely on, the, on other nations for pieces and to create logistical chains out of nowhere, which led to a longer time for development of new vehicles as well as higher expense that would require an increase in military budget. According to a CA paper of November 1986 about the Italian military industry, the advent of a substantial domestic defense industry has aided the military in its quest for modern arms, but has weakened its organization with the rest of NATO. The growth of domestic armed firms has also provided substantial employment throughout Italy, particularly in high technology fields, and the defense sector has become an important exporter. 
Italy's armed forces have been able to take some advantage of the growth of the Italian defense industry base. The military modernization emphasis on the domestic manufacture, largely successful, and design, still largely unsuccessful, of weapon system. Because of this priority on indigenous systems, we believe military procurement requests have been more favorably considered by the government than they would have been if Italy were more heavily dependent on foreign suppliers. However, the CIA report had another point to make. Italy has gone a long way towards meeting its domestic manufacturing goals, but the lion's share of Italian Army and Air Force's military hardware is still foreign design. The modernization effort is far from completed, and a substantial share of the current inventory was produced in the late 1960s and the 1970s, before Italian firms began to build up their domestic design capabilities. Thus, it had discarded the idea of purchasing systems such as the German Gepard and preferred producing their own design. The Sedan 25 by Otto Beida, a self propelled air gun with a quad 25mm cannons designed using the hull of the M113 APC, had been chosen in 1979. 15 batteries of 16 Sedan sister were planned in order to accompany and defend the new units of the Italian Army. At the same time, Otto Breda, now Otto Melara, started developing on private initiative a new system by using a 76mm fast firing cannon, already used on ships as an anti air gun. By wanting the turret complete with radar and other system on the hull of a OF-40 MBT or a Leopard 1, the system would have had a max range of 6 to 7 km, the same range of anti-tank missiles fired by attack helicopters. Otto Melara hoped that the Italian army would consider buying the system in order to start advertising towards other utilizers. Thus, the sedan project would bear fruits only in 1987, when the vehicle entered service. Only in 1995, the last batch of sedan would be delivered to the army, and the automatic, while having a proposal for 200 billion liras, was not a cheap machine. With the end of the Cold War, two things were clear. Most Western SPAAs were outdated and the likelihood of a major European war had massively diminished. Moreover, the Sidams and the Automatic were fully hit by this realization. For if the Sidam was outdated for the capacity of contemporary attack helicopters, while the Automatic costed far too much for each unit for the army to consider the purchase, especially when Italy had already spent 800 billion liras for the Sidam. However, with the military now focusing mostly on overseas peacekeeping mission, units needed less AA cover, and with cuts to budget, even upgrading the sedan was far too costly. However, the need for a stopgap, either while the sedan upgraded or the automatic was to be considered into service, arose, and due to budget cuts, it had to be cheap. Enter the Arsenale Esercito di Piacenza, the Army Arsenal of Piacenza, also known as the Polo di Mantenimento Pesante Nord, Center for Heavy Maintenance North, a base in the territory of the city of Piacenza that since the early 20th century specializes in doing maintenance and test work. It is not the first time we met it, since the Fiat 2000 passed through here during one of its trials. The center had been, for quite a while, the center for maintenance and testing of AA guns, between which the Bofors 1470L, in large use within the Italian army, has towered artillery. The Arsenal was also tasked to fix 60 of the 120 turrets from Germany of the Leopard 1A5 to the upgraded house created on license by Otto Milara. The Arsenal, however, did not just upgrade vehicles or maintain them. It was also tasked with roles of study, projecting and developing prototypes. So, with an idea to try and match the buffer cannons, which were reaching their retirement, with an abundance of Leopard hulls and a need for a stopgap, which would have aided on achieving a cheap vehicle while better ones were being developed, the Arsenal put its knowledge to test. By assembling a Bofors 4070L on the Leopard R, the new SPAA was born. Now, after only two years, the program was abandoned, and my source, the Revista Italiana Difesa, Italian Defense Magazine, says the program was abandoned without regrets. But I feel like this vehicle development is treated just a footnote. But I like to expand a bit on it, because, yeah, the, the, this video, it's about the Leopard Bofors 4070, not the automatic or the sedan. 
because there was something more about it, like this was not supposed to be the end result. And thanks to General Fulvio Poli, we have a bit of a better description of what really were the projects regarding the system. The Army Arsenal of Piacenza has studied the possibility to install the Bofors 47 in cannon on extra Leopard 1 hulls. Compare the necessities of a the tank regiments, such project had the objective of improving mobility of the 1470s, matching them with younger hulls. This match might have brought to the realization of a cheap and effective self-propelled gun. The project aimed at reducing as much as possible the height of the turret, to improve the reload system of the cannon, that, becoming auto-loaded, would have went from 240 to 300, 330 rounds per minute and to install an external electrical generator for the operative functions of the gun. The turret would have been crewless, and the commander gunner would have been hosted in the hull to the side of the pilot in the specific cockpit. It was projected to install improved chase radars, LPD-20L, with central aiming and fire on an M113. Each battery made of four self-propelled guns and one radar would have supported tank and mechanized regiments for self-defense, but the project had been abandoned after careful examination of the report about efficiency and costs. What well, started as a simple cheap stopgap turned into a project that would have reached the same cost for systems already designed. So, to answer why the Leopard Bofor 4070 was made, well, it was basically to fill a gap and try to use extra materials left from the Cold War in a time frame where most military expenditures were, at the time, rightfully cut. However, what really determined its failure was the fact that to make it at least functional, it would have required an amount of modifications that would have literally brought to a new project instead of just a cheap stopgap, which would have required specific new pieces and taken far too much time and money. And yes, I spent um, much more time uh, building up the context in which this thing was built rather than how, because there is a much on how it was built and even the project is just notes that the general put down on what it was supposed to be. But if you really look into it, you can find a lot on why it was it made, which was actually my main uh, problem, because I remember I started this video uh, thanks to a Twitter in which was this thing was described and I was like, what? What's that? That seemed really low tech. And then a comment explained it. I will uh, show it on, on video because I can't remember the at of the users. A comment explained it and what it says it was a stopgap. The winter session is starting, meaning that I will have a few exams to go through and meaning for a while I won't be able to post, meaning that I will um, say goodbye now uh, and wish you uh, Merry um, festivity season because this time of the year is filled with festivities for all cultures and religions for some reason and um, a happy new year and I hope to see you to the next video because I'm not stopping here as I said plenty of time I don't want to abandon this channel just taking a bit longer to the next one and yeah I hope it was fun I hope it was good for you and that uh, uh, I hope to see you again and uh, not that I don't want to but like, it's more like when I find time to make another video <laughs> and that um, everything goes well yeah I will uh, as always leave the um, sources in the description but instead of giving you a list of books, since I mostly use magazines and PDFs for this one, I will review here the list of uh, all the documents. So, bye bye people. See ya.